Thank you. Thank you. That's that's what we call team. That's what we call family. Right there. True camaraderie here from the Newtons. All right, listen. Two-time champ next year. Are you going to call it right now? Who's going to be the champion next year? Yeah, the captain. We got the leader, Cam Newton. Cam, you're down two nothing. Four runs on the spot right now. What's going on out here? It's a game of momentum, and we have it right now. What was your mindset going into the game? I saw you giving your team a speech. What'd you say? We're just trying to stay focused and been doing the things that got us to this point. Are you going to predict victory right now on Time Warner Cable? Absolutely. Thanks, baby. Thanks. Danny, you've been involved in basketball your whole life, whether it was your playing career or now into coaching. But take me back to when you were a kid. What role did sports play in your childhood? Well, growing up and, and going to his games and practices, how did that benefit you seeing the pro game and kind of growing up with the basketball in your hand? From your freshman year to your senior year, what would you say is the main thing that changed about you and your game, but also personally in your leadership ability and some of those characteristics that you developed throughout college? So you have four national championship trophies, you get to your senior year. What did the opportunities look like for you following that? and? and kind of where was your head at as far as what did you want to do next? All right, so Carla, take me through the moment. You're there at the Rose Bowl, over 80,000 people there, over 40 million watching on TV. You're there, you have the opening penalty kick. How do you focus on your task and knowing there's so much at stake, but kind of keep everything as simple as possible? Can't wait. It seems like both these teams have been on a collision course this season. Wake Forest plays great defense. Zach Gill, the defensive lineman, Daryl Hodge, the star linebacker going to NC State. That's what they're built on, but they're running attack with Devin Lawrence, the junior. He's having an outstanding season, 21 touchdowns, but they're going on the road to Middle Creek. Well, Middle Creek. They've got superstars on their team. The Page, they've got superstars of their own. Will Jones, outstanding quarterback, count for six touchdowns last week. Javon Leak is the Maryland commit. Both those two guys are the stars in the backfield with Jones committed to Western Carolina. They've got experience. Coach Kevin Gillespie's been in this spot. They went to the state championship last year. This year they want to win it. So that defense, they're playing outstanding. They've got stars littered throughout that side of the ball, led by Dax Hollifield, their outstanding junior linebacker. He's got colleges after him. But on the flip side on offense, Malik Surratt, their quarterbacks improved playing at a high level. They're giving Surratt time to throw the ball. Then when they mix in the run, they're spread out with their open set four wide receivers, but their offensive line is doing the job, allowing Sims to get to the outside, creating big lanes. See, as this play breaks down, Surratt so impressed with his ability to keep his eyes downfield, not throw the ball, but rolled out of the pocket, looked upfield, found truck, then the power, the resiliency, and just the awareness of where the goal line was. Truck dominating this game so far. Logan, a big guy, six foot one, 335. We'll see him playing nose, plugging up the middle. Shed off the offensive lineman, Leak, nowhere to go. It's 335, that agile, quick feet, this defensive line, that's the strength of Wake Forest going against the strength of Page in the ground game. It should be a fun battle to watch. Campbell, six foot one, 230 himself. But look at his technique here. It's the outside linebacker. He wasn't faked out by Leak. He stayed at home, kept a wide base, and then attacked Leak at his hips, brought him down, and a huge stop. When you've got a hit man like Hodge patrolling the middle of the field, if you're a wide receiver, you're looking to see where number 44 is to make sure you get away from him. Avoid dislodging that ball. Making his presence note right on the way for sideline. Now it started up front, great blocking by Wilson, the center, Blunt, the left guard, and then Superman taking over here, flying into the end zone. And really, he does look like Cam Newton, Superman, number one for the Panthers. And Cape Fear brought the blitz, the right side of the line of scrimmage, but Hooker, see here, ran right away from it on the zone read. He took it up the middle. The blitz couldn't get to Hooker. The middle of the field opened up, nice blocking up front, and an easy touchdown. Pro Bowl tight end Jake Walker, who's in the final season of a whopping contract. A 10-year career at a crossroads, owner of all those team records, a certain future Hall of Famer with, of course, a surgically repaired right knee.
a huge impact on the Hawks offense.